Welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is the repeater from Studio One. This is not a review, it's a deep dive guide about this device. So everything on this guide is in chapters. So if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. So if you like this guide, like and subscribe, please. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Everything is on the description. Okay, so let's just begin. I'm using an instance of Mai Tai, which is the kind of uh, the built-in uh, synthesizer that you get with Studio One. I'm going to be using uh, an, an init patch. So this is going to be a note effect. So if you go to instruments, you're going to find the four you have right here. And we need to use the repeater. So you can drag and drop to your channel. And this is going to sit between your keyboard or your MIDI instruments and your uh, virtual instrument, which is going to be your synthesizer. So this is going to output MIDI information. Also, if you don't want to drag and drop, every time that you have a channel right here uh, with an instrument, you can uh, toggle this, uh, this uh, device on and off from here. Well, if you go right here at the bottom, he's going to say note effects. You can add more right, you know, right there from the top, or you just can go right here and remove it. If you want to add it again, you go to repeater and kaboom, you have it right there. So right here, you can uh, open and close it because this is not an insert uh, of an effects. So this is something that sits, be sits between before, actually before your instrument, your virtual instrument and between your kind of a keyboard or MIDI device. Okay, so let's just begin the repeater. What it will do, it will just repeat your notes. Now, since you have a delay, what the delay does is going to repeat whatever sound source is going to get and it's going to repeat it. And with your feedback, you're going to get more repetitions. This is pretty much the same, but it's going to be pretty much the same for MIDI. It's going to repeat your MIDI notes. So if I play a key, that is going to be translated into a MIDI and this is going to grab that MIDI and it's going to repeat it a certain amount of times and that's how it works so if you press many keys like you make a, a chord for example it's going to repeat all your notes you press on that keyboard so for now i'm just going to be playing one note and we're going to talk about the other thing like playing multiple cards uh, multiple keys uh, later okay so i have this instance going to turn this off and if i play this this is how it sounds i'm going to do a little bit of cut off and I make it a little bit less, you know, annoying. And I'm going to go back to the multi, uh, you know, to the repeater. So if I go right here, uh, whenever I play a key, whatever key is going to grab it and it's going to repeat it a certain amount of times. So if I play a key, it's going to repeat it like that. How fast it's going to go? Well, right here, this knob is going to decide how fast it goes. So you can sync it to your DAW tempo or, you know, you can go slower. You can sync it to whatever the, the tempo and then uh, you get the subdivisions or you can just unsync it and go in free mode, which is going to be in Hertz. Right. So uh, I'm going to go in sync mode in this case. So it's going to be 116. So then you have the steps. So you can do and uh, you can go up to 32 steps. So if you play a key, it's going to be repeated 32 steps. And there's no stopping it. It's just going to go and repeat it 32 times. So if you go really slow, something like that, you're going to be waiting for a long time. Of course, you can turn this off and back on. Just not going to happen. Right? So you, <laughs> you're going to need to kind of wait for that. So if I go right here, it doesn't gonna doesn't matter. It's just you're gonna need to kind of wait in this case. So I'm gonna be uh, putting it on eight, so we have something you know a little bit more normal, and then on sixteens. So again, this is the speed you can sync and the amount of steps that's gonna do. Now you might think that this is super simple and dull, but it's a powerful tool. We can do a lot of things with this. So you have two main things right here. You have the velocity and you have a gate and you have a pitch. So if you're thinking that this works as a standard kind of a step sequencer, this is not the idea. It's just kind of a delay for MIDI, but it's going to listen to whatever velocity you're kind of a play because you are playing some keys and your keys will affect the instrument depend on the depending on the velocity. So in this case, uh, I'm going to turn this off. This synthesizer, it's uh, on a default patch and it's not really listening to velocity. So if I play a key and I play soft, 
we get the sound. And if I play hard, we get the same sound. So I'm going to go to velocity right here and I'm going to make it velocity sensitive. So if I play soft, it's going to be a very, very quiet sound. But if I play hard, it's going to be a loud sound, right? So now it's uh, very sensitive to velocity. So whenever we do steps right here, uh, the velocity, whatever you have right here, is going to be taking into account whatever it is that you're tapping or playing. In this case, it's going to be input. So if you play your MIDI keyboard, I'm going to go all the way up. You play your MIDI keyboard. This is going to be translated to whatever repetitions that you're going to get. So if I play soft, the repetitions are going to be soft. If I play hard, the repetitions are going to be hard because your input is on. So then you have your level. So this works as a scalar of whatever velocity that comes into the repeater. Because remember, your key MIDI input, uh, your MIDI keyboard comes first, then comes the repeater, and on the chain then comes your synthesizer. So right here on the velocity, you need to decide what you're going to do. So uh, level all the way up, it means that whatever you do on your, on your MIDI keyboard is whatever is going to repeat. If it's soft or if it's hard. But you can scale it down right here. To, uh, maybe I'm going to go right there and set it to a very low level. And I'm going to be playing it hard. Now the repetitions are going to be very soft in volume. So it doesn't matter I'm playing hard. So this is going to scale down whatever velocity goes in. Now, if you don't want to uh, for you to control uh, the velocity, you know, with your uh, MIDI device, you can disable the input, and now it doesn't matter if you hit the hit the hit the keys softer or harder. It just doesn't matter. You're just gonna go 100% the whole time. So I'm playing soft, doing the same. I'm playing hard, and it's doing the same. So this level is going to be is going to decide how the repetitions will be. If they are going to be kind of a soft, constant soft, or just hard, right? All the way up in velocity. So that's that's pretty much it. And you, this is very important because you can generate, uh, you know, very cool sounds with this. Because you can scale or just change the different velocities. So this knob you have right here will scale down your velocity. For now, I'm just going to leave the input on, uh, off. So we have full velocity, 128. And the scale, what it will do, it will scale it down. So it's going to start hard and then decrease in velocity. Same thing if, you go, if I go up, if of course the level is down and I scale it up. Let me just go down and I scale it up, something like that. I'm going to be playing something that's going to start very soft and then, you know, increase. Same thing. Of course, right now we have eight steps. Let me just do a little bit more, maybe 16 steps. And I'm going to be going all the way up and it's going to start hard and then... <laughs> right, so that's the point of the scale. It's going to scale down whatever you have right here. Then we can go into manual mode and kind of uh, do whatever we want, but we are not there yet. So then we have the gate. So the gate works pretty much like the, uh, like the velocity, but it works with the length of the note, the duration of the note. Right now, uh, on the synthesizer, everything is, uh, you know, the, the amp it starts and then it's, uh, it dies when I release the keys. So this is going to work. Now, if you have something on your synthesizer that it's very staccato, very short, well, you're not going to hear the effect of the gate because the notes are very short on the synthesizer. So maybe going uh, something like that is going to, you know, it's going to be a little bit more useful for this. So the gate will decide, and for now, I'm just going to do eight can decide how long the notes are. Right now, it's just, you know, 50% uh, or 100%. But what I can do, I can just make the notes shorter. And the notes are going to be short. I can go really small. Or what we can do, we can go the other way, and we can make them super wide. So what is happening is that the notes are overlapping on top of each other. So if I maybe go right here, this note, it's overlapping the second one. This one is the other one and the next one and the next one and the next one. So, so you can even play with that and the velocity and the scaling. Let me just maybe do it like that. You can get really, really cool sounds. So that's fine. Okay, so let me just go back and go back here.
So just like this scale that we have on the velocity, we can do the same thing with the gate. So this one will scale it, the, uh, you know, it's gonna start uh, with the white, and then it's gonna get shorter and shorter until, you know, we get to the very end. Or we could go the other way, we can start, you know, aggressively, and then it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Of course, depends on uh, how much repetitions this is gonna make sense. For now, I'm just gonna make them a little bit shorter, and as they, as it goes up, is gonna start growing. Right? So it's the same idea. Now, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do it like this. So then you have the pitch. So the pitch, it works like the scale for the gate or the scale for the velocity, but this will scale the pitch. And now we are kind of entering into the more uh, interesting uh, part of the repeater because now we can manipulate the pitch. So how this is gonna work, if I go up, this is how it's going to do it. It's going to scale the pitch on each repetition, and this is the amount, you know, how much is it scaling. So this is a very sensitive uh, kind of a value. So you need to uh, make sure that you're gonna be going 21, 70, uh, 21 semitones up. So, uh, so you need to be careful with this. If you go crazy, it's gonna go uh, to a very high range. Same thing if we go lower. So now you can manip manipulate the uh, pitch, you can do velocity as well, and you can do maybe the, the, the gate and scale it, you know, scale it like that, maybe something like that. And you can get really interesting sounds. Right? So a very useful thing. Now, all of this that we are doing uh, right now, we are doing it, and I'm gonna go back to kind of a default values for now. Everything that we are doing right now, we are doing it with the knobs. We are scaling and scaling up, scaling down, and so on and so on. But you can kind of uh, do this on a more individual or manual uh, kind of a way. So right here, it says individual. So this is because you can enable this and you can enable this and you can go into manual mode and do it yourself. You don't need to rely on the scale uh, to just to adjust the values. So for example, let's say that I want to uh, mess with the velocity. Okay, so this one is gonna be down, this one's gonna be up and so on. And now you have different velocities and that's really cool, right? So same thing with the gate. Uh, it doesn't say gate right here, but if I go right here, modify the gate, it's going to work on a, on a kind of a step by step. So, you know, let's get a little bit weird, but yeah, it works. Uh, and if I play now, we are going to be getting something like that. Right. Now, if on velocity, you go all the way down just like this, is uh, it will pretty much skip whatever it is that you're doing. It's still gonna play it, but the synthesizer will not, you know, get it because it's velocity of zero, so you get the volume. It depends on what you're doing on your on your synthesizer or your instrument, um, you know, completely up to you. So we are uh, messing with the gate and messing with the velocity. That's cool. So what we can do as well is mess with the pitch, but now when we enable this button, we don't have to rely on the scale. We can go and do it manually. So now it's even more interesting because I can do whatever the F I want right here. I can go up and down and up and down, and this is gonna go and, and do it. Well, right now it sounds very dull. Let me just bring, <laughs> maybe a, just a better sound. A little bit of effects, maybe a modulation, a little bit of delay. I'm gonna go to the reverb. All right, and you're gonna have a, you're gonna get a cool sound. All right, so one more thing that you need to uh, you need to know is that whatever it is that you do right here, it doesn't mean that whenever you change it manually or you enable this. You have to do it manually. The scale and everything that you have right here will still work. So if I go up in gate, it's going to change whatever values that you have right here. Uh, but uh, again, it's gonna scale it up or down and the scale still will work. So this is global controls will still work. So you can use them just to adjust whatever it is that you have. So that's it, you have a lot of examples and whenever you miss, with these values or you do something that you really like, remember that you can store the preset 
right here, right? So you can store your own presets and use them later. So that's it. It's a very easy and simple but powerful uh, effects, just like the other ones that you get right here. Remember that you have other ones like the quarter or the input filter. And of course, the arpeggiator. This is a very useful one. All right, so that's it. So hopefully you learned something on this one. It's a very quick video, but uh, you learned uh, something and this was useful for you. So remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, of course you can. Just check the links at the description. Uh, you have links for PayPal, Patreon and all of that. All right, so thanks for watching and see you on the next one.